Sandy Grigsby, Kendrick Hauske, this is our hour to hang out with you, the hour of power to talk about things from personal development to what it takes to take you to another level. And we get to start with what are you doing in the world right now that makes a difference? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? What are you doing right now? What are you doing in the world that makes a difference? This second? Yes. I'm here. Yep. And that's really important. This call. Yeah, so the whole idea is this. Many of us have been isolated, sitting around. Uh, many people may have recently watched uh, the political saga that happened in DC and are going, what is going on or what's about to happen? What's exciting? And now we don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion or gender preference here, but there's a lot of confusion going on in the world, a lot. And it's just not with the United States, but globally. You know, um, this whole idea of what a vaccine's going to do and how it's going to deliver a, a change in uh, hope. Uh, new careers. We've moved to Zoom. Does Zoom make work better or does it make it worse? Um, I would say the whole definition of a job has totally changed in the last 18 months. Yeah, right? you that's agree? for sure. You can be comfortable on that today. side? Mm, you're keeping me warm with your hips. Oh, you're just cold. I'm always cold. So, you know, the idea of a job, we heard today that from somebody who hires people overseas, that it's actually not easier to hire or less expensive to hire someone overseas, because since everything's gone virtual, they're demanding the same rates that they would demand in the United States. Yeah. So remember that most jobs that were outsourced were outsourced because of two reasons. One, the time, because while their offices were sleeping, other people on the other side of the world could be working and the cost because the infrastructure and the cost of living was a lot lower in other parts of the world, it was economically more viable. Well, now they're demanding the same because Zoom has leveled the playing field. So if you're sitting in South Africa, Janae, and you're going, hey, this is what I normally get, and I'm competing against someone in the States, well, now you theoretically could charge almost what they were charging in the States or another place yeah. because Zoom has created a le level playing field. Very interesting paradigm. We've never had this happen before. So that's the first thing. Second. What time is it? What time is it? Meaning it doesn't matter anymore because Zoom has made it so time zones don't matter. We can be anywhere working. So for example, right now it's 10 o'clock in the morning for us where we're at in, in Dubai, where it's 10 o'clock in California. I'm gonna do phone calls today that will last for the next three to four or five hours. And then when you wake up in the States, I'm going to be on the phone making calls also. You don't know that I'm somewhere else because it doesn't matter anymore. We've all become global and we're able to work global. Now, there's the challenge. The challenge is, should you stay where you're at? Should you stay in wherever you're living and complain and bitch about what's going on if you have the ability to leave? It's so true, right? Well... We came from what would become would be considered one of the jewels of the world, very similar to what Zimbabwe used to be when it was Rhodesia. Rhodesia was literally the breadbasket of Africa. It was one of the prettiest places in the world was, uh, was uh, Rhodesia. And then when Mugabe took over, he turned it into literally, and Angie can, can, can basically be a witness of this. It's, it's, it's not paradise like it used to be. Well, you mean it's turning into Los Angeles? Well, LA has got a very similar situation. I just talked to a friend of ours who was walking in Venice saying that the homeless situation, the embankment camps, uh, the vans and trailers that are on the side of the road are starting to clutter everything up. They're leading. Now, one thing you have to realize, if you have a government like what we have here in Abu in Dubai, it's a, it's a single... Um, uh, royal government. Mm -hmm. Their job is to make the country look great all the time. Their job is to bring investment here. Their job, because they're a very small country, is to make sure it's the jewel of where opportunity is. So they're going to do whatever they can to make this part of the world look great. Yeah. And they're doing a really great job. They're doing a great job. Where in the United States, right now, you're about to do something that hasn't happened in a long time. You have one political party that has dominant control mm -hmm. over states and over the federal government. So if you like the way your state is and you're a conservative state, there's going to be some serious challenges. If you're a democratic state and you like the way things are, great. Things will perpetuate the way they are. But if you don't like the way they are, that means the existing government doesn't have any 
competitive challenges against it. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is in Washington or in California, it will only perpetuate and get worse. It will get worse where you're at. So the question is, do you need a paradigm shift where you're at? Do you need to say, where I'm at right now will not get better. It will not get better. Like you will never get younger, period. <laughs> Sorry, you, know, you, you will could, not, no, you're not, you're not, I know you're not going to get younger. A lot of stretching and surgery. No, you're not going to get younger, but you can do things to slow down that, or you could get in better shape. You could do things to pre prevent the inevitable. It's going to happen. That's the same thing about where you're at right now. If it is bad now, and you are in a government that has full support now without any competitive governments going against it, meaning, um, that's why balanced government's so important. Your, where you live will probably get worse mm -hmm. over the next, and that could be in South Africa, that could be in any parts of Europe or Asia. You know, Angela Merkel in, in uh, Germany had a, a force going against her. So there was always a tug and pull that was a balance. That's important. You need that. That's not happening in the United States. That's not about to happen in the United States. There won't be balance. So it's change. It's gonna get worse wherever you're at, unless it's good right now. So for example, Puerto Rico is very interesting. Puerto Rico in the United States, a lot of high net worth people living there, it might actually get better in Puerto Rico. But I would challenge where you're at. So here's my question. We did a poll at Metal uh, the other day and I asked if people are going to move. 50% of the community, 47% said they're moving. Mm -hmm. That's a massive number. I did a similar poll two years ago and only 17% said they were gonna move. 17%, so we're almost at 50% in just that community. Two years ago, I never would have moved out of California. Oh my God, I would never have, never, never. I've lived all over the world and I always home-based it back in California. And I've always said, California is where I will end up for the rest of my life. And now I am officially a Nevada state resident. Yeah, in the United States we are, but we are not even in the United States. Exactly. Quite frankly, I don't see a value in being a U.S. citizen Not right now. when it comes to tax structure, because what's being a citizen of a country means you get the, the support and the security of a country. So if I get kidnapped, let's just say I'm sitting somewhere in some type of horrible country and I'm kidnapped, the United States will come out after me and rescue me and save me. Yay, right? Mark, you're all I will get the benefits of the protection of that country. Now, not so much. Ken's afraid not so much. If you were to get kidnapped, I'd have to put on my hero costume and come rescue you. I'm okay with that. I'm really good at that. By the way, I do like her in her hero costume. I'm a great Wonder Woman. <laughs> but you understand, this is where I want to go with the paradigm shift. And the time is this. Are you ready to change where you're at physically or mentally? Mm -hmm. Okay, we did a massive paradigm shift. <laughs> Talk about it. Well, has it. But when was it difficult? The packing up out of the house that we lived in. How painful was that? That was so. But we had painful. support. I, like hurt my finger. Like, 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 my leg. Joette was sweating buckets. Yeah, like shaky. It was but a mess. It was. It was a month process. Two months. Two month process. He Two doesn't months. remember. I don't remember. It's all a blur but, for him. But that was the <laughs> hardest. Was like five months. It was five but, months. Five months. It was like giving birth. Okay. Yeah. But now, to, how would you know? You've never given birth. To, to do a paradigm shift is not easy, mentally or physically. It's not, and it's not intended to be easy. So we need to realize that what we're going to talk about today is the change that you have to go through, and it could be physically moving, leaving where you're at, or where you're at mentally, because complacency kills when you go, oh, I'm so comfortable, or a tidal wave, or some type of TC fly, or some a warlord <laughs> is going to come out and get a attack bite you, and you will not be comfortable much longer. So we always have and to she be. She has TT fly spray. Oh, does she? Okay, good. Thank God. Aradna might have some too. Same with Janae. No, I don't think there's TT flies on South Africa. <laughs> yeah. They're definitely not in the United States. Yeah. So I, I want us to realize that we can't allow ourselves to be comfortable. Now we could be on vacation, be on holiday. But even like this great place that we're at, we started going, all right, we got to get back to work. We can't be enjoying. We're going to go to Bali soon. 
we will not be going, all right, massages every day. We're going to try. Actually, we're going to try massages every day. Every day. But we will be working on a regular basis because we can't afford to get comfortable. We can't. Complacency kills. True. Okay. So today, what we want to do is talk about you and where you're at. And if you can change something, really change something, where you're at physically, where you're at emotionally, where you're at as in the living situation, where you're at in business, if you can change something, what would it be? And I figured, let's use the power of the community to use suggestions to move you to the next place. Fair enough? Very fair. You okay with that? Yes, I'm good. You okay with that? Everyone okay with that? Thumbs up? So I wanna start with the best lighting that we have today, and that would be David. David has the best lighting, doesn't he? That's damn good lighting. No, actually, I just spent about uh, 2,500 bucks to upgrade to the whole Ken Sky, you know, Sony camera, professional look. I just don't have it set up right now. This is my low rent camera from uh, my, my laptop. So one of these days you'll see me on that. Actually, Ken, my life is kind of in a, I've got all, one of those periods in your life where all the stars are in alignment. That's where I am right now. So I am just powering forward and I don't have any major things that I want to change. Just do more of the same. But I do enjoy the bursts of energy, enthusiasm, positivity, and you know, orientation to the future that I get from you and Sandy. So I love to indulge well, that. Let me, let, me, let me ask a couple of questions just to, you know, a doctor doesn't just say, hey, I'm happy that you're healthy, but let's just be, let's just make sure. Okay. So where do you live? Downtown LA. Got it. Homeless, homeless encampments everywhere. And have you checked lately on what the mm. spread of diseases in LA recently? You know, I am, um, Fauci would like to probably make me his poster child. We are so safe. No, well, but what I'm saying is right now, because of the homeless issue, we're starting to see more and more medieval diseases popping no, up. I, I understand. My okay. girlfriend of 23 years is a fashion designer downtown LA and a great company. Uh, she cannot move. She, I mean, it's. Well, I get it. I get it. number two, is. But where, but I don't like living downtown. Yeah. Well, nor, does, nor does she. Where is your company, incorporated? Oh, I, I'm global like you. I mean, I can work anywhere. No, but where is your company incorporated? You mean Acumen? Uh, where, they're. Where is your address for your business? We're all. Everyone in the business works remotely, so any of us could be anywhere. Yes, but you had to register your business with the state, right? I work for someone else. I work for a metal guy named uh, Awesome Asayed. Oh, you work for Awesome. Okay, cool. But uh, I didn't know you worked for Awesome. That's that, that's great. But remember, California taxes will be going up. Oh, it's um, scary. Very scary. Sandy and I were about at, in California and with the United States, we're at about 55% in taxes. You know, if my, everybody goes into these companies, like what I did, hoping for, you know, some big, stock option event. And if it happens, we would definitely have to move after no, yeah. Nevada or Puerto Rico or something. So always prepare knowing that, hey, when you and I work, are you that cold? I'm so hot. We have a temperature issue cold. here. We definitely have a temperature. Maybe I'm no, going to- You and part. every couple in the universe. Not that age. You um, and every couple on the planet. Uh, men pause. <laughs> it's the so same thing over in our house. We, we walk around in Dubai and she has a winter jacket on in Dubai. <laughs> in Dubai, we're in the Middle East and people are looking at her going, what's going on with this person? Yeah. She had a winter scarf on yesterday. And a beret, matching of course. It did look good. <laughs> but what I'm saying, David, is don't wait for a tidal wave to hit you because we can see the tsunami. We see it. Taxes are a big issue where you're at, okay? Horrible. And and if you own anything in California, we just got off, I just got off with one of the guys that owns a bunch of property. There is going to be a glut of property in the part of the world you're in. Meaning if you wanted to sell, right now is the peak because everything else is going to change to where you can't sell and make a massive profit. So I'm not here to, I'm happy life is good. I'm happy with awesome. I love that guy. He's a good kid. And um, just, just be careful of being too comfortable. Well, right now, if we sold, it would only be so we could buy something else, which if it drops, would make it all sort of even out in the wash. That but makes sense. Until, you know, until um, I make enough money where she can quit, 
working, then we're stuck here in LA. I mean, we don't, we're not stuck downtown, but we are stuck. So here's but, where the but, paradigm shift happens. Mm -hmm. But I would say I've had a lot, I have, I've had a lot of micro paradigm shifts just being part of uh, metal and having the, the advantage of being exposed to both of you. So that's mm -hmm. a very positive influence and it keeps me young and I love that. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying we're stuck here, yeah. why don't you start planning where you're actually going to end up? Where you want to be. So this is the temporary state. You can even say, okay, we're going to be here, not stuck because you're consciously and actively choosing to be there for another set the amount of time. So we choose to be here for another five years or six years. And then after that, that's where we're planning mm. to go to. Yeah, we, we've got, stuck. we've got, we, we do have plans, but I'm also one of these people, Sandy, who doesn't like to talk about plans until I pull them off. Because as Ken will tell you, and as you know too, the city's full of dreamers and not- dreamers. I get it, but you know what? I just realized I was just talking to Rich from Rich Nuts. He's one of the guys in the group. And he goes, oh, you know, Ken, five years ago, you said you're gonna leave LA and move to Singapore. And Singapore was on my hit list. It was, I was planning on going there. Problem is we can't get into Singapore. But right. leaving in the United States uh, could shut down, COVID shut down. So we were planning, on leaving but moving living in multiple locations so i guess i've always had it i've talked about it talking about it as sandy would tell you it becomes more reality the more you do talk about it not in a dream state but in a planned state and, plan, yeah planning is one thing and subconsciously i knew we were going to be leaving as well sooner than later so in yeah. january i already planned to organize the entire house and joette can say attest to that that a lot of the stuff had been sorted through and already pre-boxed. So it was a matter of just getting it out. Yeah, she started really You gotta early. start something in order to get somewhere. It's so Even interesting. You don't know where you're Remember, going. I just came back from living three and a half years in India. In so India. it's not like yeah. I am. Yeah, he's, he's able to move around. He was with, um, he was with Fo a division of Fox. He was Disney, yeah, Fox then Disney. Yep, very so cool. he's done very, very well. So he's able to, he gets it. David gets it. He knows when it's time to go. But I have to say, I admire you guys getting rid of your stuff because I have a lot of stuff, you know, and. By the way, can I just tell you something? It was so hard, but having Joette and Sandy remove the emotional connection made it so much more easier. Because if I had to, every shirt of mine had a memory. I oh my did. God, I wore that shirt when I was in eighth grade. And I, uh, I think I. So he had oh. this one shirt and he's, and I hated it. It had like a hole up here and I was like, ah, and he goes, you can't give it to me. It's my favorite shirt. And I was like, all right. So I shoved it somewhere where he didn't see it for like six months. Then I'm going through a bin of stuff and I pull out a photograph of Ken holding his son as an infant in that shirt. His son is 19. Yeah. So. Getting so you guys have very little stuff now? You just own very little stuff? We have one storage locker. We have one storage locker. In Vegas. And we have... Four suitcases with us right now. We're living... Uh, we have six suitcases because two are the yeah. little carry-on But we're living right now in six suitcases. That's how we're living around for the next... Well, who knows how long. So uh, four checked bags, two little carry-ons, and then a backpack. I would just say living in a suitcase is very small. I would suggest getting out of the suitcase and going onto the bed at least at night. Uh, that's what you don't do is comedy. Thank you, Mr. Good Lighting. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye. You ready to go for a challenge? Yes. Where do you want to go? Let's go to Joette. All right, Joette, you ready? I am. I am working on my web so I can be remote, but I'm also applying for other jobs in other states. And I've been aggressively applying for other jobs in other states. I do have to get out of here. I do not want to be here. And I'm making plans to do it. I'm talking about it. I'm discussing it. And I'm reaching out to people that can help. So with the web site getting put together and that being on, that's going to be some money coming in when I do move, but also the um, the actual physical job that I could go to because I need more than one income and I'm not gonna settle for just one. So I wanna have one here, one there, and maybe a little third one. Cause right now I have a little tiny, tiny, insy bitsy, tiny baby job. And it's really super tiny baby, but then everything else should be coming together. So. Congratulations. Can, can I ask Problems what, with the passport right now. What's the website gonna do? My website should bring in some income. 
But what, what you want to know about my website? Yeah, because, because I, 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 know, so I, I always feel like a website's like opening up a store, but the problem is nobody knows about that store, yeah, and that's people to the site. Yeah, that's the biggest problem because opening up. So a I website, already have contacts. So I already have many contacts all the way from New York and out of the country and in here, this country that are excited to um, assist on putting their web, my website on their websites and assist me with their stores that they have physical stores. So I've contacted quite a few people that want to assist and want to want to just share my website. So I'm starting, I'm talking about it. And I think my communication and the communication that I do with these people that have not just one income, not just one avenue, but they also have websites and they also are reaching thousands of people and they add mine to that also, that'll get me more recognition. And the I, conversation, I totally okay. I totally agree. Here's, here's the challenge. And I find this happening in most, of the, most people that have, I'm gonna open up a website or I'm gonna open up a new Facebook page or Instagram and everyone's going to see me and it's so hard because there's so much noise out there. So there what, is a lot of noise. Right. So your marketing approach has to be three tiered. And as Ken Cragen, who's part of our group says, you have to find a way to reach people in three ways on a regular basis. Either that's going to be an email that's going to be sent out to them. That might be a phone call where you actually physically call them. And then there's a third way. And that might be somehow reaching them on social media, a, a, a text message, but three ways are what energize people to call to action to do something. So when you launch- So I have, website, so I have the um, IG that I have a lot of people reaching out to me constantly about what my business, not, they don't want to know what my business is, but what I do for my business, that's already set up. And then on the website, there'll be a avenue to leave their email put their email on so they can open up a few things. And then the, the other marketing and the communication, I think I'm pretty good about reaching out and talking to people and where I am right now at this job I'm at right now, I'm getting, I'm, I'm just getting a lot more familiar with a lot of different things and um, reaching out and speaking to other people. So here's a thought. The first thing yes. is it's not about IG, it's DMs. It's direct okay. messages. Okay, because people don't just go to your IG. You have to somehow lure them. I would recommend- How do you think I connected to the people in, in uh, New York and Boston? Good, good. Next, I DM'd do, you them. A, do, you have a, do you have a Gmail or a uh, Google Voice account? I don't have a Google Voice account. I don't think you so. Google I Google Voice account. And what you're going to do is you're going to text people right from your computer, cut and paste a message. Hey, John, I just launched my new website. Please be one of the first to make a comment or please be one of the first to do something. Something like that. It's a cut and paste. You don't even have to do it from your phone, but you have a history of everybody that you've text messaged inside your Google voice. So you can see, oh, damn, I sent a message like that to them already in the past where it's harder to manage that on your phone. Okay. okay. So that it costs you nothing. It's free. Okay? okay. And then most important is email addresses. Sandy's got this those. huge thing of email addresses. The goal is how can you add value to those people that you're sending the email to? You know, yep. look at what I'm doing. Emmanuel Kelly says, hey, I have a brand new song coming out on, on this day. Be one of the first to hear it, to share it with all my other friends, or all your friends. So he has a reason for them to want to open this and engage with it. Yes, I agree with you. And I've been working on that. I do have an awesome mentor that's assisting me. Oh, great. Do I know them? Uh, Ava and Sandy. Oh, well, Ava totally gets it. That's great. You're very Ava's fortunate. the one who's building my website. Ava's the one who's building my website. Ava's the one who's working with me on this. Is it in so, Kajabi? Is it? Um, no. No. Okay. Well, you're moving in the right direction. Now, here's the last question. I am. Where do you want to live? Not here. I can't wait to get out of here. Go like <laughs> this and I'll go anywhere. So, Right now, just the just a different state right now. Throw me in the mountains somewhere. Um, but right here is just not where. So I'm just trying Boise, Idaho, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. So the four corners and then Idaho, just to get out of here. Okay. And then from there, wait for my passport to get through and then decide on what's going on. I just got a couple issues with the passport and I'm gonna work that out tomorrow. 
So awesome. Um, good job. So you're moving in the right direction. I yes, I am. Right. Love Feel it. good? Feel good about that? Mm -hmm. Great job. I'm Joette. very confident about it. Joanne, who else? Who's, who should we call next? Well, the only one I oh, I like that man. Wait, Alan. I like that man. <laughs> I Alan, like, yeah. <laughs> let's go to Alan. I know the problem. The problem with Alan is he's very comfortable. Yes. I know he, he is. Looks comfortable in that chair. No, but yeah, I know he is. You have excellent taste. Thank you. Yeah, he lives on the beach. He he's a very. It's it's, it's a uh, but this paradigm is shifting. I mean, there's the beach and then in the valley. And my wife, we had a, a dumpster that almost the size of the how the garage, and she's clearing things out and wants to be you know cleared out except for the basic delightful uh environments both at the beach and here and the beach will probably lease out incrementally and uh, creating the stage for our ongoing existence and when we could travel we will um i'm actually my eyes have glazed over in investing but now i'm starting to pay attention because we'll be liquidating some property, having some capital, and now I want to, you know, provide for the continuing uh, with investments that make sense. Uh, so do you remember what Wayne said, the two things that people need to have in their life? Security. And? Happiness. Security and happiness. So whatever you're striving for, those two things need to be in there. So security i think investing is what the hope of security is right to give you financial security based upon mm -hmm. what your investments are moving forward do you agree i agree absolutely and happiness uh what joette now saying i hate where i'm at there's no happiness i gotta go somewhere else um happiness comes from internal first do you agree i totally agree so mm -hmm. you have internal happiness no you do too you have a happiness joette uh, do you have happiness, Alan, in your heart? Absolutely. And yeah. outlook is a, an outlook is a key part of happiness. And if you love yourself and love the world that's around you, it perpetuates itself. And you uh, you bring right decisions in front of you, and you make them. And but never be trapped, like David felt, where he said, "We're not getting out of here." Oh yeah. Oh, to never have a prisoner like attitude. His exact word was stuck. We're stuck. I'm just saying, if, Alan, so, you know, you, if you're you know, if you're start, if you're if if the world if you're sovereign wherever you are, uh, that's a delightful and exciting place to be. And then you want to perpetuate, be free to travel. You guys are doing it in spades. Yeah, but we're doing it because we know we can't be where we want to be. We want to be in California. We wanted to have a a beautiful home that had security. Mm -hmm. of not worrying about someone potentially breaking into our home, stealing stuff from us, mm -hmm. not getting a, a, a weird disease because of the homeless issues have gotten bad. The plague. Uh, yeah, well, we, don't, we, we felt we became targets where we lived. We did. Sandy felt so uncomfortable where we lived to where we couldn't bike ride anymore to what we used to do and all those and things. And thank God we stopped because somebody got shot and killed and people have been raped. Yeah, them. yeah. And so Like since we left. So security made our happiness. You created Delray. Uh, no, no, in Venice. In Venice, we used to oh, in Venice. Walking in Venice yeah. down the main promenade part, and recently people have been raped and then shot. Yeah, people. there's been murders now that are happening in our our own town, our own backyard. I mean, I know in South Africa, you know, Johannesburg's had problems, Cape Town has had problems. So the question is, where you're at, is happiness and security are they in parallel to one another? And the minute I saw her say, I don't feel safe. There is no way happiness can live in parallel. It's impossible. So we have to make a change. And the changes we looked at, because we did look at Florida, we started to look at Puerto Rico, we started looking at Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is she would say, I feel secure, but I won't be happy here. Mm -hmm. So it's what are those two paradigms so what we're doing is we're in the search for equal parallels on happiness and security. Security is 100% here. Oh, for sure. 100%. And we feel so safe that, believe it or not, for the first time since I can remember, because I cannot remember time prior, 
I left my precious backpack with my laptop and my mm-hmm. iPad and my hard drives in a car in public. You never would do that. Anyway. I know. You'd never do that in <laughs> LA. Knows I would never do that in LA. Even Emmanuel just said, never, ever in the United States. And here- Not even in Utah, in Utah, safe. I don't know. I don't know about that. But here, I went, we went into a mall for lunch and I left it and I locked the door and was like, I feel completely safe. And Joette knows how precious that backpack is. Ken schlepped that backpack all over the planet. Yeah, so safety is 100% here. The question is, can we be happy here? That's the question. So that, that's that parallel that we have to work within. So any one of you, I want to always, I want you to ask yourself, are you safe, security, and happy? Okay, so Alan, my biggest issue from what I do and all my research, I think unfortunately, Los Angeles is going to get increasingly unsafe. And I think it's, it's, um, it's going to turn into a Newark. Well, it's block to block. I mean, houses are block to block, uh, neighborhood to neighborhood. If you're fortunate enough to, to, to be in a cul-de-sac uh, surrounded by uh, multifaceted uh, ethnic gr- uh, groups that are communal and, and nice, that's a, a blessing. Uh, but block to block, you could go you know, four blocks away from right where we are and be a little unsettling. Uh, yeah, this and this is yeah. and, and I, this is what uh, Johannesburg is like. Um, and and uh, yeah, look at Aragna. Johannesburg is safe in one area, then and insanely unsafe in another area, right? So yeah, you're turning right. To a, right. So you and how do you know where what's safe and what's not safe unless you're from the area? We we would know people either from those areas or we would have heard of somebody like maybe someone traveled through there or something like that. But yeah, we I mean we're in this constant state of being alert and vigilant and looking over our shoulders. So it's like second nature for us. So it's actually a little bit weird to hear it from you guys that are that you feel that way in the U.S. because it's like it's in our blood to you know constantly looking um, over our shoulders. So. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. Heads up. Here's, here's a way to determine if you're in a safe area. When you're at a stop sign or a stoplight and you see somebody either walking near you, do you roll your windows up? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we don't have our windows down. We, our windows are not down, ever. <laughs> our windows are not down. Window, what, how do you roll the window would you, down? Would you, would you roll your windows up here? Well, I would roll them up here because it's like 3,000 degrees. No, no, but I'm saying, <laughs> would you, when it's cool out, like now in the 70s? They would be down. Yeah, you're not worried about it. That there is one of your litmus tests. Are you safe? And if you're safe, you don't worry about the windows. No. So maybe in Utah, you love them. that. If I've, I've, left, I've left my phone in the car before, just sitting there when I've gone into a store or whatever it is. I feel safe in Utah because it's ran by Mormons and... Yeah, in the, Utah, in Utah. The Mormons are pretty tough. But there are places, there are places I wouldn't do it. Whereas I feel like Dubai, nearly everywhere you go, you'd probably just be okay with it. Oh, you're, you're 100% safe here. And Abu Dhabi is the same way. This part of the world, no, we don't know about other places. Like I said, safe and happiness. Security, without a doubt. Can we be happy here is the key. So now we're investigating the happiness side. Yes. So in so LA, would, go ahead. In, in LA, they're talking about how it looks like a third world country. It does. And it does I notice, I noticed in certain places that I do go, not that I come up to the stop sign, I look for a way out in case somebody comes from beside. I don't, I don't go all the way up close to cars. I leave plenty of space so I could take off and get between. And that's what's sad. Am I happy? I'm happy because like Alan said, I'm happy within myself but I do not feel safe in a lot of the places. Like I don't, like even my own hometown, it's not that really that bad. comfortable. California is bad, guys, unless you're it's really in a bad. unique place in Orange County. <laughs> Orange County is probably the only safe area. Well, the is- oh, I'd, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily automatically agree with that. But if you're able to feel comfortable in, in reaching out to a stranger, someone going by with some clever quip or comment and invite some interaction, that's a, a good sign of comfort and safety where you happen to be. Uh, 
It's not like winning the lottery. Cause that what you just said is you won the lottery. Okay. I, 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 you don't know here where we're at right now. Again, we're in a unique part of the world and it probably will be like this in other parts where like, if we're in, I don't know, maybe Sardinia, would be like this, you know, maybe in other areas where people uh, know one another, you know, it's the old uh, Hillary Clinton book. Uh, it takes a village when the village knows one another, then you start to feel safe. Mm-hmm. And the, the freedom village- of expression. What's that? The freedom of expression. Do you feel? In- no, no, no. Where uh, the community knows one another. So here, the community knows one another is because there's cameras everywhere. You can't do anything out here without a camera watching you. So all of a sudden, I feel safe. If something, if Sandy drops something out of her up, up, her, her wallet or purse, I can go to a local municipality camera and saying, "Hey, I think we dropped something here. Can you help us out?" They'll help out. Like I thought, I lost. Like $200. No, no, my wallet. I think oh, I, lost. Okay. I, th- I think I lost my wallet. I went to places and they searched for me on cameras. Oh, yeah, that's and right. They were great. And he, he, it was your credit card. And he did lose 200 US dollars and someone ran up behind him and handed it back. And gave him. it back to me. So it just. And my backpack was wide open right on here. the train and somebody told me quickly. We have just justified security. Now we have to talk about happiness. So that's Alan on that. I do want to talk about to Emmanuel and something. Emmanuel, I, I got to talk to you about something it's, and it's bugging me. And I need you to hear me because you're, you're the guy in the group that's becoming famous and more famous. Emmanuel Kelly, by the way, um, his new album comes out next month in February. Single, single. His new album single. comes out in June. Okay. You are a spectacle. A spectacle is something that either people look through to get clarity, okay, or look at to see things. So getting clarity means that people look at you for direction. So I remember when Michael Jordan got an earring, the the community in Chicago was up in arms because everyone looked at Michael Jackson's direction. Or Michael Jordan, I mean. Michael Jordan got that earring and all of a sudden that was like, it was okay now to get an earring. Earring sales went up 2,200% in Chicago for men. Just because of that little teeny little earring that he got. So when you do something, you basically say it's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I need you to go back and look at your social media and ask yourself, is this okay? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question. No, I want to look at your social media. Well, no, but I think no matter all of us, if we're spectacles, we have to ask ourselves, are we? I, I definitely have gone back early, like super, super early, and I've deleted certain statements I made or certain things I said, or, you know, things like that I've done. Uh Uh-huh. So what you need to always do is if you're posting. Yeah. (laughs) I know. But is that okay? See, my, my, (laughs) what, what, what I would suggest is people like Justin Timberlake, who's dressing up, who's looking good, who's not divisive, talks about love, even though he was holding hands with somebody else, you know, he got in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, 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 and there are like certain things like that, but like with that, I mean, it's funny, right? So. No, it's not <laughs> funny. It's, it's funny funnier, if right? it's it's funny if it's you're not a spectacle. Yeah. So yeah. Like, like 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 today or the other day in the United States we had MLK Day, right? I know you're you're mm-hmm. you're an Iraqi slash uh, Australian, but right. thank four or five really powerful phrases that he said would elevate the way people see you. Mm-hmm right? Where it could be a picture of you and next to it, it could say that. And then underneath it says MLK. But I need you to start thinking, how do you up your game? Your paradigm shift is you're a spectacle. You create clarity for people. 
your little crazy nose thing, that's fun. You're right. That creates no clarity. No. You know what that's called? Boredom. Boredom. Oh, I was bored that day. Yeah, no shit. You're bored. And I think what happens is you forgot to elevate yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So being a spectacle is you have a, one of the biggest paradigm shifts that's necessary. That is you. Because you got over all these, you know, look at you, you, you. People may not know this, but Emmanuel, Emmanuel, go ahead. Let me um, uh, show me the tickler. Uh, I don't make this public. It's uh, it's very private usually, by the way. I just keep it's it. Not. That's what I love it's that you've done. No, it's not. What I love now is when you're performing, you're showing your body off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, when I, I first met you, you had jeans, shirts on and jackets. You covered everything up. Yep. Now you're, dude, you're one of the most handsome guys I know. True. You're gorgeous. True. You're one of the nicest people. And you now own you. <laughs> My God, you you now make other people that go, oh man, I got to lose three pounds and I feel like shit. I, guys, look at Emmanuel Kelly. He loves himself. What's wrong with you? You're a spectacle. Yeah, makes sense. You're you're nice you're a beacon of bright hope. True. Delete that. Well, it doesn't fake. I mean, it doesn't phase me. Stories where they're gone after 24 hours. I mean, it's a real. It's a real. So I suppose you're right. Like, well, like your shirt off today on one of your stories. Hey. Your shirt was off on one of your stories today. Yeah. You're showing your bare chest. I get it, unless you're working out and you're trying to show a before and after of six months from now or whatever. But I think you're doing that and going, hey, look, I got some packs, let me show them off. Give con construct around that. That makes sense. It takes a lot more work. Sandy and I don't post on Instagram because we don't know what to post that really matters. Because if you look at a Sandy post, she's got this much text. No, I, I admire what you do, honey, I really do. When you go look at a Sandy makes post sense. on Instagram, there's storyline behind it. There's context because of this picture and i think that's what makes it intimidating because she goes oh my god i got a great picture i just don't know what the construct is or context around you, this picture. I, the, I know exactly the, so you're retouching other people's work fair enough so when you're when you're posting to inspire and motivate things like that context is valuable right this is something i've learned super valuable when you're posting as just from an influencer stance of you're just posting to make sure there's content on your page, which is something that I have to start doing. And my most of my followers now aren't people looking for inspiration. There are people that are just looking to follow someone, right? Unfortunately, that's a lot of my followers these days, right? They're more music orientated, new song. They're just looking for content to just swipe, like, move on, right? It's kind of, a, or a brand endorsement or whatever it is, right? Those types of those types of um, images or or or, or um, I suppose posts are less context and more like it might be a, a line like like you said it might be a before and after and it would be I'm proud of myself still staying fit this year right but it's 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 short it's sweet it's straight down the line right which I did something like that a while back you know, where I'm smiling, I am shirtless, I just finished worked out. And I was proud of myself because somehow I've actually stayed fit and healthy this year, considering this is what I eat. <laughs> cookies, all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm obsessed, I like my cookies, right? And, and I still eat healthy, don't get me wrong, but, but yeah, I like my cookies. But the thing with me is I drink four, four to six of these a day. Right, so okay, uh, let's, let's let's step back. Get through that. You got anyway. one of the top personal branding experts in the universe right here. Mm. How does he brand himself? So it goes yeah. down to what is the message that you want to send to your audience? Do you want to send your audience that you're this silly, crazy, wacky guy to keep their attention because you need to keep your numbers up? Or do you want to sell to your audience and the message that you are someone who's really into music and has creativity and and this beautiful gift to share with the world. So what is it that you want to share? <laughs> I like that. Problem is, there's no money in that right now. 
there's always money if you're consistent with it. If you're consistent sharing things that relate to the music that you're inspiring and you're, even if you're being silly with it, but maybe you're flipping it at the end and saying, great, I, I, this is my silly side, but I do it because I am, a, I'm happy being myself and it helps me be more creative with my music there you're still leading these people along a path of enlightenment and and your journey and the things that you want to share with the world as opposed to misdirection of whatever just to keep the eyeballs on you and take some time yeah have more depth to what you're posting makes don't sense. expect this to happen overnight this is gonna no, no 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 that makes also, sense that makes sense no money and followers that are following you just for the mindless joy of following you because they're not going to buy from you anyways unless you're selling mm. silly shit now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. You're a spectacle. Don't be a spectacle. You know what's going to happen is he's going to block us now on Instagram. I know. We're <laughs> don't want to have like more accounts I can spy. Cindy block. <laughs> Ken block. No, 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 no. I, I appreciate this. I think it's super important because I have been trying to uh, have been trying to figure out what that identity is on Instagram because it is it's growing day by day and at a large base without anyone without me hiring people to grow it it's just naturally growing mm -hmm. its own because people are discovering either my new song or people follow, posting or you know are, are discovering me through an interview or whatever it is so it, it, it's it's definitely and it's important to figure out what that identity is before you know you get to the millions of followers and you because you don't want to be a joke right and that's that's super important exactly. That's exactly right. And just, it goes back to what Ken said. In a way, and this isn't a bad thing, this is a great thing, this is what got you where you're at, you are a spectacle, period. Visually, you don't have to do silly things to be a spectacle. Just looking at you, you're different from other people. So people are going to want to look at you, period. You're incredibly good looking. And then you have the tickler, which people are like trying, their brains are trying to wrap themselves around that. Like he's so hot. And then he has this hand, or not hand. It's tickler. It's it's fascinating. So you're a spectacle, period. You don't need well, to be. Well, wait, neglect the talent of singing. <laughs> that you're on right? top of the it. Talent. And people are like, they want to watch you. Your it's inspiration. Like, it's like, and don't take this, because this is a way to explain it, but have you ever seen that TV show about the 600 pound people? Yeah. Called 600 pound something? That's a spectacle in itself because people aren't used to seeing people who are over 600 pounds. The average person on that show is about 750 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's a spectacle. And then they have this journey of losing weight. Well, if he eats all those cookies. Well, I mean, and you're for that, that show. show. And I, I do agree with you. And I, I mean, and I'm looking at my last, my last three posts or four posts before that one, because that was a while back, right? Just trying to figure out the identity the last like month or two, right? And you're right. I mean, I posted, I posted something that was just, you know, um, with me, with a photo of just me standing there singing and it's, you know, look into my eyes, tell me what you see. And that was the question and, 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 and things like that. And it was, I mean, and then I posted something else that was just, you know, EK, if you, if I can do it, so can you type thing. Right. And, and my last post, which actually has done the best out of all my posts, in the last three months, which had three and a half thousand likes. And that was just, you're never alone, right? And that it was just me being there looking up at space. So no, you're right. I mean, and that's the reality. It is figuring it, that that out. So I do appreciate you guys. So, so look at what you just actually, said. Your best post was you saying you're never alone, right? Well, if you want to be more of a spectacle with something like that, have similar commentary, similar dialogue, similar meaning to the image, and then have an image, for example, of you standing next to the tallest person you can find. And give some similar, you're never alone, we can reach different heights, we could be friends no matter how our divide is. Have something like that. Makes that sense. is in itself a spectacle. Because if you're next to a guy who is seven feet tall, which you can find- And I'm up to his knees. Which means I'd be up to his ankles. That's my point. Now you have a spectacle that holds meaning. And maybe he's That's reaching it. down to you, you're reaching up to him, who knows? But you can tell better sure. stories. You're just an inspiration, Emmanuel. You are. Thank you. I like that. And it's Thank hard. You. 
buddy, it's hard to be the center of anything. It really is oh, because that means, yeah. and Sandy's done this to me because she goes, you can't go out like that. You yep. can't be dressed like that. You yep. can't, it's like, oh, come on. But it's so much easier. And that's the problem. Easy destroys credibility. Yeah. And you know, when he is easy is when he gets the comments where people say, I hear everything he says and it makes total sense. And but, I love what he says. But how can you listen to a guy who wears those kind of shoes? Yep. Mm. Or dress that way. Or, Can't yeah. take him seriously. No, no, she's right. We had those. No, right. You are right. Yeah, you so are I burned right. all his shoes. <laughs> made all new shoes. <laughs> it's so Did you strange. actually? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. She got... I mean, oh, you're right. I mean, the amount of times I've looked at someone based and judged them based on their shoes, I know that sounds terrible, but it's a fact. I mean, they've got, you know... You know, good shoes and it look and it's clean and 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 cleanly cleanliness is super important. That I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna definitely turn around and say, okay, this person I want to talk to, right? That you know that person looks like they got this. And you know why that is, right? So when people and and I I emphasize the getting dressed properly, doing your hair for women, do your makeup. You don't have to go extreme. I mean, look, I only have some blush on, a little bit of eyelashes. That's it. So you, Sandy, you you're naturally kept, gorgeous. So you're going to be uh, when you look kept though, you're telling people who are looking at you that you love and care about yourself. When you look disheveled and messy and your clothes are all over the place, then you are obviously not kept. You look like you don't care about yourself. If you don't care about yourself, you don't care about other people. That mm. is the message that you're sending. Mm. Mm. All right, Manuel. Chat that. So, Thank you. But, but remember, you do have those platforms. You're doing Facebook, Instagram. I'm not sure what else you're doing. Just be confident. What's that? And TikTok? Are you on Clubhouse yet? Well, but that's not really a social platform. It's the new one. Uh, Everybody I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I do not like it. I can't stand it. But it's the new one. It Get is. On it. But it, it'll it be gone in six months. Day. It'll be gone in six months to a year. I'm I don't talking. think that that's going to happen. That's what but, they said about a lot of things. Yeah. That's what they said it's about. It's been Sandy successful because of That's COVID. True. It did. <laughs> What'd they say? It's going to be done in like six weeks. It's been over two years. I didn't say that. I said you guys will last. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The minute the minute <laughs> you got rid of the other one, I said the next one you score, you're going to last because she's definitely going to be better than the last one. Oh God! Stop. Thank you. <laughs> true. There's no doubt about that. Oh my gosh! Uh, the uh, last one was a nut jump. All right, all right. I didn't say it. Well, Kim's eyelashes are good. All right. Love you, Emmanuel. We're around if you need us, okay? All right. Let me go. Actually, we have not. Anthem. Hi, Anthem. Hi, Anthem. Hi. Anthem. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Good where, to see you, Ken. Hey, buddy. Where are you? Uh, I'm around the corner. I'm, uh, I'm on Palm Jumeirah, but I'm a little closer to the stem this time than last time. So. Yeah, we're here uh, here with Peter again. He's our uh, COO and family office executive, and yeah, we're having fun here. We're we're uh, we're with heroes like you, so we're grateful. People here are actually doing things. It's amazing. So it's, uh, and, and, and it's it's fun. What what's your thought of bouncing between the U.S. and uh, the Middle East? What's your thought on the the parallels or the dualities between the two? You know, it's it, it's unusual. Like Cynthia and I left Rustic Canyon. You know, we were there as a second home. We had domiciled in Vegas, then we domiciled in Houston. We domiciled in Puerto Rico. We did Act Twenty Twenty Two, so we still have the Act Twenty. We could go back and get the Twenty Two. I think for another like fifteen or fourteen or I don't know ten some odd years or something. Then they like grandfather it. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you a little story, right? I mean, I I did get stopped by customs here, right? And they they kept me for four hours, right? Because I had some uh, CBD THC. I travel with it everywhere. <laughs> and and actually, it was really it was really a blessing, right? I believe in personal agency, right? I, I was blessed with love and infinite wealth, and you know, so as as a very young person, you know, my family. So you know, I, I believe in personal agency, and and basically, you know, it was really it was it was eye opening. We actually educated about eight people, you know, about cannabis and about Bitcoin, which was really cool. So um, I, I think you know it's wide open here. Um, I am Real quick, what happened with what happened with all your CBD oil? They just confiscated. They were really, it, really right? cool. They were actually really, really chill. They were like, "Look, we get it. I, I have my Oklahoma medicinal cannabis card." So Cynthia's from Bartlesville, which is where Philip sixty six was founded. Now it's in Houston, right? When Conoco took him over, and so it used to be like the richest place on the planet per capita income. So I've got my cannabis card there. There's like 
14 dispensaries yeah, in a town of 40,000. How do they respond? They were to chilled. You? Did they let you? They were really, them? really chilled. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, they, they let me keep my empties, but they, but they took like the nine grams that I had and then they took all the gummies, but they were loving it. They were like all curious. And I was explaining like back pain. Can't have these. Was, you got to confiscate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, it was great, right? It was great. It, it was, it was fun. I mean, it, it needed to happen. I always feel like there's experiences when they happen. You know, they need. To, it was the first time I've ever been stopped by customs anywhere in the world for it, honestly. So, but it, it was kind of a blessing. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They kept it. They had a little scale. I did a little thumbprint. Yeah, you know how? How? How, how did they catch it? Um. Be, oh, so how they caught it? So I was a little sloppy. So I had a five ten vape battery in my Patagonia jacket that I pushed through the screener and i think that was what triggered it right and then he went through the laptop bag and then they went through the other bag and i mean I, again i'm like it's I'm, I'm a privilege right white guy from the u.s have my car they're like we get it it's all about personal health they were like they were totally chill right but point being is that like i think there is still it's a very young marketplace it's a you know all governments i view as forced marketplaces and so emirates is a very young marketplace and there's a lot of opportunity that said it frightens the hell out of me what's going to happen here with the credit contraction coming this year. There's so many U.S. dollars lent out in the last 12 months and so little base currency created out there. The demand for dollars is going to make 2008 look like a total cakewalk. So all these places like here that are super highly levered, I see as real risk. I, I really think California is always on the leading edge of everything. Well, let's, this is a different conversation. I'd love to have this because yep. I... I I'm, I'm fascinated where you're going with that because that's a whole preservation of, of, of wealth and income and where it should go. So that, that's a conversation Sandy and I would like to have with you. I would, I, I would love to get together with you all. I think I've been texting, but probably SMS isn't going through. I should WhatsApp you probably, right? Um, yeah, WhatsApp. Maybe, you know, I'd love to, okay, cool, Signal. I got that too. Yeah, Very we're good. All on, we're all on Signal. We're all moving to Signal. Getting off of right, WhatsApp. Right. Getting you got way it, off you got of it. WhatsApp. But Anthony, yeah, it's good. Yeah. We hope to connect with you. Hey, a couple of things couple before we go. Work. Okay, it's good to have you here. A couple of things. I want you all to go check out Sandy and Focus. This is where her personal branding is because she's doing a lot now. It's she's getting she's now getting focused. She's been so overworked right now when it comes to all these uh, images. So people don't know this. What Sandy does is she captures people as their true self, and by taking a photo, one photo literally takes fifteen hours to get to that person after the photo is done. Meaning. Oh, 15 hours later, you're going to get it. No, it takes 15 hours to make that photo perfect. And she's had 80 photos to work on. Something like that. 80 photos. over the, So she's been overwhelmed. And two nights ago, she finished all those photos. It was like, oh, I slept all day yesterday. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> oh, I recovered. Now, now she's getting to work on Sandy and Focus and all these other great stuff. And uh, I encourage you to go check out what she's doing. And hey, women that are out there, I make men great uh, by having this thing called metal and metal is starting something called metal onward. And that's a once a week thing for co-eds for women specifically, actually, where we take the best of all these metal members that are doing incredible things like Shaheen, which is great. You don't know Mighty Paul and, and, and uh, Eddie Pham. They teach you how to take your idea to market. So once a week, there's an a, a hour class from the top, guys in metal teaching you their traits which we'll announce and we're very excited about that it's called metal onward and um that's about it but just looking at all the comments yeah. uh get a mood board that's what we said to emmanuel yep he does need that <laughs> he does and i i if we didn't call on you sorry about that next time she's gonna get to work ready yes are you really ready no oh no <laughs> but we appreciate you hanging out with boards. us everyone What's mood what's that? Boards? What's, oh, mood what's the mood, mood board? board? Oh boy. Man. What's the mood board? The thing that's gonna change your life. Let me see if I can go find a past um a past episode that we did on here and you could watch it, but we went pretty deep into mood boards. They're a game changer. They really are. Mm -hmm. And you probably yeah, he does need a mood board. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. All right, everyone. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye everyone.